So here we have example three in our differentiation topic, differentiation from first principles. Uh, if you haven't looked at example one and two already, you've got to go back and do that. Example one uh, is fairly straightforward polynomial function. Example two, we were starting to introduce a fraction, which made it a wee bit more difficult. We had a particular um, method that we had to do to split up the term so that we could solve that. And here, uh, example three, there's a different technique yet again, just when you think you've nailed it, we've got to introduce another little thing in order for us to understand the derivative of, in this case, f of x equals sine x. Okay, you're going to need a particular um, result that I'm going to demonstrate on a graph for you. But if we start off in the first instance exactly the same way that we've done before. We've got our function we want to differentiate, so we can set out our differentiation uh, function that the derivative is the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And as we've done before, we're going to substitute in uh, x plus h into the original function. Remember, uh, as I said before, where x appears in your original function, put a bracket, and in the bracket you're going to write x plus h. That's the easiest way to think about that new function. We're going to subtract from that the original function, f of x, and we're going to still divide it by h. So that's kind of no good yet. Normally at this stage we're doing a little bit of algebraic manipulation. We're multiplying out brackets, squaring out brackets and stuff. So what we can do is simplify the numerator here as well, because we have, and you'll be excited by the idea here, we have here our uh, compound angle here, the sine of x plus h. So we need to remember our addition formulae from uh, previous courses here. So remember, if we want to expand this addition of terms, sine of x plus h, that's going to be sine, uh, well, if we think about it, it's sine uh, a plus b is going to be sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Okay, so we can use that particular rule to say that we've got the limit as h tends to zero of sine x cos h plus cos x sine h and then we've got our minus sine x that we had before all over h. At this point we might have been trying to cancel things out thinking hopefully something's going to disappear but it ain't going to do that this time. We have um, something that's not very good. We can't really or cancel anything down by h. We're kind of at an impasse. Um, so what we're going to have to do is to do something that you're going to look at and think, there's no way I would have thought of that myself, but it's by learning how other people have developed it that you can begin to copy that and look for ways around obstacles. We have an obstacle here. One of the ways we can work around that, I'm actually going to take a common factor of the first and the third terms here. The common factor is sine x. So if I do sine x, I've got cos h minus 1, and then I've got plus cos x sine h again, all over h. So still can't leave it there. We've got our h as a denominator. What we are going to do is we are going to, again, split it up because... We're going to look at the two parts here effectively. Um, not only that, I'm going to separate the bits that have got the H terms. We want effectively to look at the, the parts that have got an H term in it. So I'm going to split it up into two um, parts here. First of all, I'll just write it out in as sine X cos H minus 1 over H plus so we did this in example two, we split it up into two bits because it made it easier to 
uh, examine. So not only are we going to do that, but we're going to end up, what we're going to do is take out the sine x term here. And we're going to think, because that's not got an h term in it, that's independent of h. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the, the limit function, as it were, to this cos h minus 1 over h. And then same on, on the other side. It's going to be cos x is independent of h. So I'm going to take that out. of the we're multiplying those two together of course so it's sine x times that plus cos x multiplied by that and all we need to do he said all we need to do is to work out uh, what these values are in our square brackets now it doesn't work in the way that we did example one and two there isn't um, a common factor of h in the numerator that i can cancel down uh, so the only way we can come up with a value here at the moment is by looking at the graphical values of it, I'm afraid. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the, the two values. We're going to look at, first of all, uh, sine h over h. And I've got that on a graph in order for you to have a look at. And we're going to see what happens when the value goes to zero. And we're going to actually get a numerical value. And then we'll have a look at cos h minus 1 over h, and we'll see what the value is of that. So, here, if you have a look, are our functions. So the first function that we're looking at here um, is y equals sine a over a. Now, I've made it a instead of h uh, for a particular reason that the, graf the graphic uh, program here doesn't like uh, h as a variable. But it doesn't matter what variable it is. I've used a instead of h but it's the same shape and if you have a notice here that down we've got a slider on the, the left hand side we can change the value of a and at the moment i set it up at five and if you have a look uh, at what we're oh it would help if i actually switched it on there we go uh, so we're going to switch on the uh, the function and that's the green line now, if you notice, as I decrease the value of a down to 4, uh, it's changing the value of the function. It's a horizontal line. Um, I'm not going to go into why that is too much. Um, but what we need to look at is what happens as a gets smaller. We can see that the actual value of the function is rising. And as a heads towards zero, I'm down to 0 0.3 here. It's almost at 1, and at 0 0.2, it's almost even closer to 1. When it gets to 0, it actually disappears because, of course, we've got there isn't a value. That our denominator is 0. But we can see that as a tends to 0, the value tends to 1. And what that means is, if I go back to my uh, solution here, that's where we're working out here, the sine h over h on the very right-hand side. This one here, we can say that graphically we know that as the value tends to zero, that number is going to tend to one. The value is going to tend to one. And we actually can write that in. What about the first one then? What's a uh, what is the value of cos h minus one over h? Well again we can go back to the graph. And we can select the other function that I've got. Now, if you notice on the left-hand side, it says cos a minus 1 over a. Again, just imagine that it is h instead. It doesn't matter. But again, having a look this time, it's the black line here. And as the value of a decreases, it's, it's getting lower and lower towards negative 1. And as I keep decreasing, its value the value of the function increases to zero. Again, when a is zero, it disappears. But just before zero, when uh, a is very, very small, it's almost at zero. And so we can see here that the value of the function is uh, zero. 
So what we can see is that then that first bracket, that the limit as h tends to 0 cos h minus 1 over h, the value of that is 0. Not because we've managed to work out algebraically, but this time we've actually worked it out graphically. And that's okay when you get something that is beyond uh, your algebraic means. You can look at it on a, a graphic situation, a graphic calculator on Desmos, which is what that was. And we can now quite easily simplify this because sine x times 0 is 0. And cos x multiplied by 1 is cos x. And we've worked out what you already knew, that the derivative of sine x is cos x. Here we go.